everyone. Um, thanks for joining us for our webinar today. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the four critical workflow automations to ramp up fulfillment. Uh, my name is Trey Schuldberg, and I'm one of the account managers over here at Shiphawk. Before we get started and meet our co-host for today, I want to cover a few housekeeping items. Um, we'll be recording this webinar, and we'll send you an email within 24 hours with a link uh, and so that you can watch it on demand. We want you to join the conversation. So you'll see that there's a question and answer, answer widget. Um, put any questions that you have in there. Me and Rob will do our best to answer those for you. We'll save a few minutes at the end and uh, try to get out as many of those questions as possible. Um, if we don't get to your question, uh, someone on my team will, will follow up with you over the next couple of days and make sure we get those questions answered for you. If, if you do need support or are seeing technical issues, um, please make sure you reach us at learnmore at shiphawk.com. Um, there will be a short survey, survey that pops up at the end of this webinar that we'd love for you to fill out if you have some time to share about today's content. We wanna make sure that these are valuable for you as much as they are for us. Uh, lastly, we're excited to tell you about a promo we're running this summer. Shiphawk is giving away an all expenses paid trip to Sweet World this year in Las Vegas. Uh, that's on October 16th through the 19th. Last year, we did this giveaway and the free trip went to Jeffrey from Ondex Sports. Uh, scan that QR code right there to win. All you need to do is schedule some time with one of our team members. Um, we'd love to get your feedback on this webinar and learn a bit uh, more detail about your warehouse process. Last year, Sweet World was sold out, so be sure to answer and hopefully you win that ticket. Uh, now let's jump into our conversation for today. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Trey Schulberg. I'm account manager here at Shiphawk and the, had the pleasure of helping many of you um, and our customers implement our shipping and warehouse management solutions uh, and work with them to help drive maximum efficiency and throughout throughput across their operations. Excited to share some of the features that helped them with you today. Um, joining me today is Rob Meyer. Rob is our senior solutions consultant and has been instrumental in helping Shiphawk customers not only get the most out of the Shiphawk solution, but going above and beyond to ensure that they receive the answers to any business problems that they're looking to solve. Uh, Rob, let's get started. Uh, let's start with a brief introduction. Go ahead and tell us about yourself. Sure thing. So, hey guys, so nice to meet you. I'm Rob Meyer, Senior Solutions Consultant here at Shiphawk. Uh, my role is to help both the pre-sale side and post-sale side, making sure that we and our customers and prospects feel good about potential solutions and showing how exactly we can deliver on those, on those commitments. Um, so, as further background on me, I used to do implementations when I joined about four years ago. So I've seen both sides of the house. So really anything uh, someone would want to cover, we're always open to that. Um, for today's demo, what I'm going to show you, we're talking about the four, the four key workflows. Uh, that's going to be rating, packing, shipping, and reporting. Those are the four things. Um, if you've joined us before, um, especially on one of my demos, it's largely the same one you would have seen during the pre-sale cycle as well. So if you've seen it before, it's an opportunity to revisit some of these things as well. And if you haven't seen it before, it should razzle and it should dazzle. Um, so with that, Trey, I don't think we had anything else we wanted to cover before we jump in. Is there anything else? No, I think we're ready to dive on in. Um, I think one of the most common questions I get asked is around rating. So maybe it's a good place to start. I think it is as well. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to start with one of our pre-built integrations for e-commerce. One of the key areas that we do help our customer our customers and prospects out in um, several pre-built integrations we got shopify magento sweet commerce sweet commerce advanced big commerce and ultimately because we have an open restful api we really can integrate with any cart perhaps it's homegrown maybe it's something working maybe it's a more of a csr type of tool like salesforce all those things are in play so i'm going to share my screen and i'm going to take you to the point where you might think that we might get involved for shipping quotes which is within the cart Give me one second. So you're going to see this guy here. So already taking the journey through the cart for my wonderful e-commerce storefront here. I happen to happen to need a couple of taillights for my Swedish car. So we're already ready to go here. So got my address ready to go. And as soon as I click on this continue to shipping button right here, what's going to happen is we're, that this pre-built application is going to compile a rate request containing all the relevant information from the form, like where are we coming from? A lot of integrations have multi-location uh, multi involved here as well. So where are we coming from, multi-location? Multi um, what is it where we want to fulfill here? 
And it's going to send a request to our rate, the Shipbox rating API endpoint. And when we receive that, the, typically the first thing we want to do is help you figure out the best packing configuration for this. That's going to help you figure out what the get, get that best rate. And that's through what we call smart packing. Um, you may also refer to it as cardinization, cubic optimization, all kind of the same ideas here. And we're going to help you figure out what that best configuration is through looking at the length, width, and height, and weight of your items. And then looking at the, um, the length, width, and height, max stack heights, max weights for all of the, your packing materials that you have loaded into Shiphawk. Um, so um, for that, that is going to help you get that best rate. But keep in mind, that is not a barrier to entry to using Shiphawk and getting a great, getting a great experience in the cart. Um, we have plenty of our customers who do not use smart packing here. So for that, we can also go just weight-based only as far as the rating within an e-commerce platform. Um, for those customers who want to do that, typically we see more generous markups applied to the rate um, because you know there's going to be greater variances if you're just going weight only. Uh, so, so that's one. So we're going to figure that out. From there, weight only or via smart packing, we're going to send a request to your connected carriers. Um, as you may know already, Shiphawk is not a freight broker, nor is it a reseller of rates. Rather, what we do here is we help you try to get that best rate and um, best experience through your existing negotiated rating um, and perhaps future relationships with your carriers. And also good news with all those integrations with the carriers, they're all in real time, they're all web services and API based, meaning that we're not just beholden to some rate card that may or may not be accurate. Uh, it's gonna be the real deal rate for your rate coming back from the carriers. So we're gonna ping them for all those rates. And of course they'll say, yes, we'll take it for this. That'll come on back to us. And that's what's gonna come on back to cart. So a lot is happening there. Um, ultimately though, this is all gonna happen within just a few seconds. I'm going to make sure we have a couple things off really quickly here, because I wanna show you that based on experience, we'll come back to rules here in a second. So going back to the cart. So as we, you just heard a lot of things happening, all gonna have come back really quickly though. So you're gonna see here that the default experience here is to return all of your negotiated rates from least expensive to most expensive. And so I start there typically because I want to prove that yes, Shiphawk indeed is capable of real-time rating with your negotiated rate. So check one right there. However, I look at this and I say, hmm, this might I might want to make this a little bit better for my customer and for myself as well because ultimately I've got I have I don't know 50 different options here in the list. And for us, we might know the difference between this, but ultimately my customers probably don't, and there's a lot of choice, and so they get overwhelmed and they abandon the cart, and then well nobody's happy at that point. So this is where we're going to get into how can we make this better, and this is where the the first uh, this is the first look at rules. There are two flavors of rules within Shipbox. There are rating rules and shipping policies. Rating rules these affect how we display rates back to this external system here, happening to be Shopify. So I'm going to show you the three the three ways that we make this better. There are a lot of other things we can do, but I want to show you those three things to get you get a good idea of this best experience within the cart. So we're going to go to rules, and we will take a deeper dive into these later. Um, one of the most common things we see is that we're going to mark up our rates by at least some percentage, so, we're not, so it's kind of a prepay and add model. And we do this because we never want shipping to be a cost center. Um, and if it's a little bit of a profit center, that's probably, probably even better. So this rule is pretty basic, saying markup by this percent. We can also do flat markups as well. Um, we, can, we can qualify in a heck of a lot of different ways here. This one's just across the board. If it's coming from my Shopify store, mark it up by 20%. Uh, there are other things you could do is say, let's say that there's a VIP program going on, maybe it's over a certain spend or whatever it might be, then it's this, it, a lot of ways to think about it. This is just a nice basic, it's this storefront, everything's uh, cost plus 20. So we're gonna go ahead and save that, we'll turn that on as well. And then the other one here, which is probably the even more common, is gonna be masking the carrier and service. And what this helps ship us do is don't return every single negotiated rate I got back. Rather, I just want you to return the cheapest rate for each level of service that I got back. So ground, two day, three day, overnight, flat ratings, standard freight, guaranteed freight. And then, so what that allows us to do is create a cleaner experience for the customer, because ultimately for them, they really just wanna know when's it gonna get here? What will it cost me? Then also that's helping me because I had, I've never promised a certain carrying service in the cart, allowing me to perhaps change that up or optimize that on the back end again, because I never promised anything specific. So we're going to turn that one on. And then the last one we're going to look at is free shipping. There are a lot of ways to think about this. This one's a basic. If you spend over 99 bucks with me, you'll get free shipping. Could be that VAP program. It could be promotional or might be. This is just a straight over 99. You're going to get free shipping. So 
with rules, there's a lot more we can do here. We will take a deeper look at it later, but I wanna show you how it changes the customer experience in the cart. So we're gonna go on back and change that address once more here. Make sure it doesn't, shop by, doesn't cache that. So then let's continue to shipping. And this is gonna change here. We're gonna see how the fruits of the automation and rules change the experience here for the better. And proof is doubly dynamic because number one, we are always going to get your real-time rates from the carriers. We're always going to look at what your rules, how your rules are currently set to change this experience here. So now a lot cleaner. So number one, you're gonna get that free shipping for standard ground. And then the rule actually says free shipping for the cheapest right here. So that allows to say if three day came in lower than ground, great, let's go with that as far as the one that I'm gonna give away for free. And you'll also see that if the customer says, yeah, I really don't wanna wait eight days, I want this to get here faster. We can say, well, cool, that's the, I'm happy to do it for you. This is how much it will cost you to get that done. So a lot of cool other ways we can change this up. We can do flat rating, the whole, uh, all these different models here, but I wanna show that ship, how Shipbox is creating a better experience through rules and dynamic uh, multi-carrier rating in the platform. And then the other place we're gonna go as far as rating is not just the cart here. The other experience is within um, an ERP or perhaps a, um, a CRM tool like Salesforce. The most common thing for us is to see it within an ERP and the ERP that we most mostly have most of our customers in is NetSuite. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. For a demo, we kind of treat this as an agnostic platform. We have others, we have pre-built for Acumatic, we have customers in Bright Pearl, SAP, and for a lot of other places, but NetSuite's easy to work with here for our demo. So as a sales, for a salesperson, the typical incumbent situation is that um, uh, uh, is you're going to be calling down to the warehouse to get a quote from, quote from the warehouse, to annoy those guys and gals, wait two, three days, whatever it might be, or you're going to multiple different carrier websites to try to get a quote and then have to key that in. Um, that is not the experience with us. And when it's one, actually, if you, you, you might be used to one already within an ERP, this one's even better because it does not take you outside of the platform at all, keeps you right on the form, you don't have to juggle multiple platforms. So the experience here is the same. It's the same automation, same multi-carrier rating. So you can see here as far as what we need is where you have a customer. Already have a couple of line items. The experience here is really just to go to a button that's inserted with our suite app that says get ship hot rates. And that's exactly what it will do. It will do the same thing we saw back in Shopify, return all of your negotiated rates, and then all the rates that you got here. Also showing that multimodal is in play here, multi-location is playing here as well, international is in play. So really unified solution for a lot of a lot of modes of shipping here. And so again, the default is return to go all negotiated. Key ways we see this changed up here. Um, markups might be more aggressive here because typically this is a B2B type of customer who we'd be working with here. So maybe it's higher, 30%, depending on what the vertical that has the tolerance is there. We might say, you know what, I do want to show um, everything. I do want to show the carry and service. But I don't want to show every single one because that too was overwhelming to that salesperson. So maybe we'll, we'll just return maybe the five cheapest rates we got back. A lot of ways to, um, to change this experience here for the better. So, and then the other point here is that we click a button and then for them, they can just take a peek at it, say, I'm just kind of curious about what it might be those rates. Or we can say, you know, actually, that is the rate I want. So all they have to do is select that from the list, it will populate what did you choose. And then we'll also update your shipping method based on the an existing shipping item or method in here with a full mapping tool as part of our suite app to get this done. Then also updates your shipping costs. So their experience is two clicks and you're done. Really not an exaggeration either because we're seeing an action in a real NetSuite environment. So that's rating. Um, from here, where we're gonna go is to that second piece, which is you know packing and shipping. So of course we have an order that came in, so it's coming, we saw the e-com experience, also, if there's anything that's manually entered within an ERP, at this point, we actually want to fulfill this. And so for today's conversation, uh, we're not going to touch too much on the Shipbox warehouse management system. There's another, we're going to have another webinar for that, where um, our manager, Solution Consulting Jack, is going to talk to you about the warehouse management system piece. Um, for us today, I'm going to show you where the handoff is. And so uh, with this, we're going to, of course, want to pick this order, begin that fulfillment process. Um, as far as we're concerned of the TMS side of the cohesive solution here, really are just looking for uh, a system or something to be creating an item fulfillment and a picture pack status. So that's easy to do here. So I'm actually gonna have to fail out of this really quickly here because we have a shared demo environment and people were messing with it. So, and every demo goes perfectly. And this is no exception to that. So I'm gonna whip up something really quick here, get some sales order practice. 
And while he does that, um, good time to just float. If there were any questions on that rating portion, make sure you get those in there. We'll get those answered for you. Um, as we begin talking about packing here, I guess good time for just a little customer story. Uh, you know, we, we get to know our warehouse pretty well, especially down on the, on the floor. Um, we were installing our smart packing algorithm, which we'll get into in, in just a minute here with a customer who'd been a customer for several years. Um, as we were testing smart packing, we found uh, a packing configuration come out where we suggested a box and the, the warehouse manager immediately said, that's not going to fit. And I see him leave the camera. What he, what he did was go running down to the warehouse floor, grab the, the box and all of the associated items that we had just packed, come running back up into the camera, put the box together, put all the items in, and then uh, surprisingly uh, exclaimed and noticed that turns out they all fit in the box. Um, when questioned, you know, how often is this happening? How many times a day does this happen? Uh, the expectation was that it was never happening, that we were always using the best fit box. After, after seeing this, it's countless number of times is there expected that this happens all day, every day. Um, and hopefully that's what smart packing that Rob's about to show you here is, is designed to help solve that problem for us. Rob? Yeah, no, I'm here. And so that was good timing. Yeah. I undid with some, some, other, uh, some other of our wonderful sales, yeah, the team here, you know, everyone's curious. So anyways, so as far as ShipLock itself, so ShipLock is, is a cloud-based solution that lives at a packing and shipping station at a computer. Um, so you're gonna see this here in Chrome. Uh, we're gonna support Windows, Mac OS, and, uh, Mac OS and Linux as well. So basically if you can get to Chrome or a similar browser, you're good to go. Um, and then when you log into ShipLock.com, you are going to be by, greeted by a queue of orders. And the queue of orders, there are a lot of ways to triage this. Uh, we have our batch type shippers where they wanna be able to filter down, have safe folders of like, like orders where they wanna select 100, 200 billion. And then let, let's select them all, let it rip and get out of here where they're more of a, you know, kind of ship pick pack. Uh, we totally support that. As far as this demo goes and what the uh, mo what most of our customers will do, they're moving to more of a pick pack and ship uh, method to where the, the outcome of that post pick is that you're going to know the exact order or orders you want to process when you show up to the pack station. So if you have RWMS, what you're going to be doing is getting a tote number of which contains the order orders that you've just picked and that will automatically pull it up. You might have a system where maybe you're on paper pick ticket still, and then you have a traveling document that happens to have the order number on it with a barcode. Uh, both are e easy to leverage here. If you have a barcode of that order number or tote number, all you have to do is scan it to pull it up uh, in Shiphawk. And when I talk about scanners, I'm not talking about anything fancy. I'm talking about a handheld USB keyboard web style scanner. You can find them on Amazon for $25 and you'll be delighted with it. So I'm going to kind of Take advantage of the fact that the order happens to be right in front of me in a demo. We're going to pull it up. So we're going to beep, boop, pop that, scan it. And when I pull that up, you're going to be greeted by decision automation, both on the packing and the shipping pieces. And so on the packing side, that is through smart packing. So again, smart packing is looking at the dimensions and weights of your items versus your packing material to figure out how can we use the least amount of it to get you that best rate. So the outcome here, like right away as the shipper said, this is great. I know the boxes I need to use. How would I pack this? Can you easily just pull that out via smart packing? And everything you see me doing with my mouse, as far as material changes, any actions, anything I'm clicking on, we do have command barcodes you can print out to scan them to save you then many clicks, driving that efficiency, speed, and accuracy. So with this one, this is not a wild example, and that's fine. That's fine. That's intentional because I don't want to do anything too wild here to, to set a good base as far as what ship, Shipbox is actually doing. So. These boxes pack it like this. That is the most, that is the cubically most optimal way to do this. So we're guiding you there. We're also telling the shipper, guess what? We you don't even have to think about how to go rate shopping here. We're not putting that decision into your hands necessarily. We want you basically to do what's on the screen and then move on, move on to the next order. And so, and that's already figured out. And the way we figure that out is that if you quoted it upstream um, in a connected system to us, like an ERP or an e commerce platform, great, we're going to use that. Um, there, we want to respect that all the way through. Um, if you didn't do that, um, in that case, then we're going to start looking at your rules and we'll, like, we'll look to see, okay, is there a certain reference or value coming over to us that says maybe there's a certain SLA we got to hit. I promise them two days to ship like you got to figure out the best thing within two days. Might be accessorials to consider. There might be certain, certain carriers you want to use and certain regions, some ones you don't want to use. A lot of things we can consider to help you get that best rate because we could know that the best rate isn't always the cheapest rate but the default is the cheapest. If, we, if there's nothing else that applies, we'll optimize for you and we'll choose the cheapest rate given this configuration. 
and these addresses here. And so it's a mini pausing point. So we looked at the automation here. We talked we talk about the packing being optimized through smart packing. We talked about the carrier and service being um, optimized through quoting and through rules. And so ultimately we want to get that, get it right 100% of the time. But as you know, in every with every process, every system, there are exceptions, there are edge cases. So for here, we don't want to have you just stuck with this. Ultimately, you, anything here is changeable in the full view of Shiphawk. There are other views where it's more locked down. They look, the automation, we trust it. You, I don't trust you. So you're going to do what it says on, on there. We can do that. But I do want to show you this full flavor of Shiphawk to show you the possibilities. So ultimately, anything is changeable here. So you want to say, you know what? 24, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, don't like that. I want to do something else. So there you go. Well, actually, change, let's show the same point. There we go, a small guy, a 10 cube. You can see here how that changes up. You might say, you know what? I don't want that. I just want one box and change it up. That's easy to do. You can easily add packages. If you wanted to clone 50 of these guys, that's easy to do too. Just number, clone it, You've got 50 more. So that's all easy. Or you might say, I do like the packing configuration, but the carrying service, I want to go right shopping. That's fine too. You can also do that here. Um, this will run through all of your negotiated rates, return it least expensive to most expensive. Um, and then these, this one here is fancier because now you get logos. Now you're immersed in the brand experience of carriers. So you can see that you know we're gonna help prevent them from choosing the silly ones down here. And rules also apply here too to filter out anything you would never want to use. So in this case, we like on track. Going, coming from going to San Diego to Denver, nice economical rate, really reliable. So we're gonna go with that. So the happy path here is scan the order. You say ship up. This is awesome. I, I'm so so over, so please, that you've told me what to do here. Oh, I'm at the point now, well, this is good, I've done this, well, I want my labels now, and I will move on to the next order. Good, just ship that. So there's a barcode scan for that, click on it. That will reach out to the carrier, get your labels back from them, get your tracking back from them. Now all of your printers start firing off. Your laser printers, thermal printers all going nuts. So you get your parcel labels, we can do packing slips for you as well, and they're highly customizable on our platform. They can have multiple different formats, and it's all rules-based when it applies. Um, international documentation would fire off if this was an international order. We'll look at that later. Um, card and content, PAL content labels. You might call them UCC labels or GS1 labels. We support those as well. They're all firing off at this time. So the big takeaway as far as the shipper's experience is that all this stuff, all the documentation, I didn't have to go anywhere else, all automated for me right in the platform, one system to manage. So they're good. The customer's gonna be good because they're gonna get their order. But what about the source system? So in this pre-built integration, um, and what's going to happen as soon as we get that tracking number back, we're a pro from a, an LTL carrier. We're going to go back to the item fulfillment via web services. And then within one to two seconds, this will be marked as by default ship. We can also mark it as packed as, if you'd like to as well, then wait for the first carrier scan to get this back to a ship status. And we're also going to write that key detail. So number one, under the shipping tab here, you're going to see number one, what did it really cost you to ship this at the time of shipment? What's your true accrued cost? Uh, inclusive of any surcharges and accessorials, then the carrier and service. You also then have who shipped it, really important for traceability, productivity reporting, uh, educational opportunities. So we're gonna log that there. We'll then also under the packages tab, this is what you ship, good to know. So per container, per box pallet, whatever it might be, weight, content, tracking your pro per. Then the other place to consider is the, is the Shiplock package items tab. This is really geared towards our customers from which uh, have EDI trading partners, which means typically then they're going to also have the requirement to generate advanced shipment notifications. And for those advanced shipment notifications, you know that there has to be a good level of detail per carton to facilitate that transaction. So we're gonna write that back here. And then per line, we'll also have what's in there. And also to go even further here, um, for anyone who's on SPX Commerce, we have a full integration with them direct through NetSuite uh, for SPS Commerce as well. So drive, again, driving that automation of those types of uh, integrations. So probably a good pausing point here for trading for you to, to jump here in a second. But ultimately, this is the core experience of Shiphawk um, from a parcel, domestic parcel experience. We, we're going to look at LTO. We're going to look at international. But, the, but you should know before getting into that, the experience there is largely the same, just with slight variations. And the reason is there, we wanna have a platform that's easy to adopt. We want one, and we also want one that creates positive repeatable outcomes as well. So of course, naturally you want it to all kind of feel the same. So 
with that, Trey, did you want to jump in with anything before LTL and International? Yeah, um, kind of as we lead into to LTL, there's a good smart packing question here from, from Jason that maybe we pass along to you. Um, the question is, how can we opt optimize the, the smart packing configuration of multi-item shipments with consideration to more packages versus larger packages? So items that can ship alone or could ship in a box with other items. Um, typically, it's better to have fewer shipments, but that breakpoint seems to fall somewhere around two to three packages. Correct. Yeah. And that's so as far as oh, there are two questions there. So ship alone versus doesn't ship alone. That is actually an attribute at the product level. So I'll kind of pull up real quick here. So we'll source this all from NetSuite or from your source system here. There is, uh, especially for, this has to do with LTL where it ships alone. So if it's going to be um, one, you know, that's going to buy that stuff or throws on a pallet, then we're going to do that. Um, as far as then thinking about the best rate, um, I would say that with, with Shiplock and with other solutions as well, the end out, the end outcome of what we're looking for isn't necessarily the best and cheapest rate. Rather, we're helping you, um, we're looking for efficiency. And the reason for that is because we're, re we're rating in real time with the carriers, because then if we're starting to think, okay, should we do two versus three and all these different permutations? Now we're getting beyond the 10 to 15 second response range, because then we got to try all these different ones. So um, ultimately, there are a lot of ways to massage this to get better outcomes, but the core, the, the core um, responsibility of smart packing is to create the most efficient uh, packing configuration. Awesome. Uh, so follow-up question from Jason on here. Uh, on multiple package shipments, how does the picker know which label goes on which box? So that's more of a workflow decision there um, on what works best. I mean, as far as with the, the WMS, a little, little bit easier. That's one where I'd want a table for the implementation to help better understand your process because there are a lot of ways, a lot of ways to think about that. So there's not a one, I don't think there's a one size fits all answer to that one. Good answer. Um, so next we're gonna transition to the, the LTL side here. Uh, fire away, Rob. All right. So LTL, so for this one here, we've already seen the architecture between uh, an ERP and Shipbot that unified, you know, kind of um, uh, yeah, tight integration. So as far as from here, what we're gonna do is actually work out of Shiphawk. So we already have this order ready, whipped up for you. So we're gonna do LTL, it's already ready to go, pull it up. And so for this one, we pull this up, we're again gonna be greeted by that automation on, on the packing side. So here, now we're working with a pallet that is um, with items that are both loose and pre-packed. So we look at this here for a coffee table that's of course going to be coming, typically coming from a manufacturer that's already pre-packed. So I'm just going to slap that on the pallet. But then I have 25 of these loose items here that best fit into a 2014-20 as well. So get, guiding the shipper, but we know that you can change it if you need to. Um, also for the carrier and service, now we're working with more carriers and more services, especially with freight brokers here as well. So we're with several of those, I think 14 freight brokers. So Worldwide Express being the biggest one of our partners. And then I show the rate shopping here to show you if you were working with a freight broker, we'll show you who that who is indeed brokering that rate. Then if you have direct relationships as well, what these look like here as well. So I'm actually gonna go in this case, I'm gonna go with a direct relationship, even though it's more expensive in the demo, because for every, so Worldwide Express has their own format of a VIX standard BOL that's slightly different. For every other carrier, it's the, just the same format. So I wanna show you what to expect in most cases. So we'll go to that one. And then you're now at a point, how it's wrapped up, ready to go. Wanna get this out of here, get my BOL. So same experience, wanna save and ship. Just for this one, just had to confirm a couple things about that discussion, about the BOL. So most of this should actually be pre-populated for you. So pick up ready close time. These are all defaulted for you based on your settings. So I like what I'm seeing there. Next day, that's fine. So rating close time, we're fine with those as well. With a pro number, you don't need to do anything here. Because of all of our integrations, they are all in real time. Pro number is going to get returned back to care by the carrier. So you don't need to do anything here. You could also, which I do in the demo, is if you had a, a pre-assigned pro or you just have your own book of pros and you want to say, hey, carrier, guess what? That's pro and you're going to like it. You can do that. For pickup and delivery instructions, we can source these externally. We have fields for that already pre-built in NetSuite. We can map that, map that over. So as the shipper, you don't need to worry about that. Um, I don't put anything too wildly specific here in the, in the demo. I do put these in here just to show you where they do appear on the BOL. 
Um, but you know, as far as you could say, hey, you need to call or go to this website for an appointment delivery, or no access rules may be added unless explicit approval comes from this person. That this, you know, a lot of different things you can do here. So we're going to go ahead and book this, which by default both books and dispatches this load. Um, if you don't need dispatching, uh, we can also turn off auto dispatch. You can mainly do it when you need to, especially if you have the drop trailers. So we'll book this up, and then the fruit of this is going to be largely the same. Oh, well, that's a good that's a good point. Let's go, let's go somewhere else. So, and then we'll remember everything here. It's going to be good to go. So, old I, this is the first time I use old Dominion in a demo. That's a good error. I mean, you're right. That means they're doing their job. Oh no. Where's the URL one? So I'm just gonna do that. And you can see what theirs looks like as well. Gotta clean up some carrier accounts for this. So here we go. Okay, get some more. We'll go with the best option, book it. There we go. All right. So ultimately, same experience, ready to go. Shipper's going to get the documentation. We're going to be ready to get out of here. Um, the for LTO, I do want to show you what that BOL looks like. So that would automatically print out for you, but probably want to see it. So we'll see here. And this is worldwide format. A VIC standard is not too uh, too different from this. So just kind of coming on through here. So and third party, of course, is a broker. So this is getting billed to them. So they are just inherently third party. Um, for third party and freight collect and forth on the parcel side as well, that can all be sourced externally from the NetSuite Acumatica, your source system, or we can do it via rules. Um, so that's all easy to handle through us. Then any kind of accessorials, pickup instructions appear there. And then SCAC, Pro, all these guys. And um, so and then the contents of the load. So that's LTO. And largely, we didn't talk too much about accessorial inclusion. And it's all available there. It's all managed via rules. This is just a boring, you know, uh, you know commercial to commercial warehouse. No, they have a dock, no inside delivery. So just showing some kind of basic stuff here as far as LTL. I want to show that basic experience here, showing that basically as a shipper, you're feeling the same about this shipment. So that's LTL there. Um, we'll move into international next, but Trey, is there anything in, in the chat that's worth chat? chat worth chatting about no open questions yet i got one for you when we get to rules but let's go through international first here cool all right let's get international so we're going to do a nice little uh parcel shipment up to uh the greater toronto area seeing our friend vlad and so we're going to go here orders are ready to go for me open this up and then we'll smart pack this off earlier so i do want to show you what it looks like with smart packing so just have the shipbox they try that again there we go, 10 cube, nothing fancy. So from here, the shipper's experience really is, well, this is good, I like this. And we also are good because we already have your international um, data pre-populated here. So the key things being your HS code, HTS, tariff code, whatever you wanna call it. And then also your country of origin or manufacturer already ready to go. So you can book this effectively and have this go through worry-free. Also for this one, this is just a, this is a very low value shipping going up to Canada. So for EEI filing, we're definitely going to be exempt um, for that. If you wanted to pass along your ITM uh, for the booking there, you have the opportunity to do so. Or if you're exempt, why are you exempt all the way through? Uh, but for this demo and in, in this particular example, this is fine. We're good with what we see here. Then once we're done, all we have to do is ship this. And as far as then the, the outcome, we're booked up. We have all our labels printing out. And as far as international documentation, this is, this is the big highlight here for that. Um, for the big four parcel carriers, um, so USPS, UPS, FedEx, DHL, we support their paperless integrations. So you do not need paper for any of those shipments, assuming you're going to a country that supports paperless trade. So if you're going to Brazil or another country that just doesn't do it at all, you would need some paper to get this through. So what might that look like? We'll bring those up. So these would automatically print for you, but we want to see them again. So commercial invoice, the most important of them. So we printed 100, yes, it will take a little bit of time, but we're printing only one. So we're gonna go through, open that up. And for the commercial invoice, it's pretty customizable as far as the content of it and where it's coming from. Uh, in a demo, I don't fill every single thing out here, but you might imagine what it looks like. Then the most important things here per line item, what are, what's your HS code and country manufacturer? 
what is the dynamic valuation of this that you're actually charging the customer. Then below here, your beautiful signature as well. So it's a good looking commercial invoice here, getting pretty customizable as far as information goes on here. Format fixed today. Then the other guys here, certificate of origin. So if you're going to Canada or Mexico, we want to get you the ESMCA or Kuzma, and uh, that'll print out here in a second. So again, good looking doc up here. We can also get you a generic one if you want, if you're not going to one of those two countries. Then also, if you're doing any kind of freight forwarding, you need that shipper's letter of instruction, ultimate consignee, we also support that as well. And for that SLI, we'll, we'll pull that up. Here it is. Nice and detailed. So the big thing here, what we talk about is that for international, you didn't have to go anywhere else, go to in, in a, create your own PDFs, go anywhere else, manage a bunch of Word docs. We're just generating for you, um, which when I say just, I mean, that's a big thing as far as international goes, because the incumbent situation typically is a heck of a lot more of a fast um, than what you want. So that's international. Um, but international LTL, I'll just call it here. Um, for international LTL, we do support it, but only from the US up to Canada and only with uh, T-Force, FedEx Freight, and SIA today. So internationalization will be a, a big initiative uh, next year, but today um, just should know what we actually are doing. Awesome. All right. Oh, you're going to jump in, Trey, right? Yeah, moving over to rules here. Um, um, next, uh, as we kind of get into rules, it's it's a it's a good one. I'll, I'll get our open question for you here as you, you talk about it. Um, from some an anonymous person here, we, we use multiple UPS accounts for different types of orders. Can we map or add a rule to tell Shiphawk which account we want to use for a rating parameter when we send that we send from NetSuite? And I think that's kind yeah, of a, absolutely. a perfect example to kind of showcase and lead us into this rules conversation. A lot of tribal knowledge at companies um, and businesses and in warehouses on what those rules are. Our goal is to help take that tribal knowledge out and automate that process. So go ahead. Yeah, definitely. And so for rules, yeah, there's a lot of it can do. And I, I know that in certain systems, you can only have like you can only have one account per subsidiary. That's that's pretty limiting. Good news here is that yes, via rules will absolutely be able to, in an automated fashion, determine when certain accounts should be used, um, both for you know for rating purposes, third party, whatever it might be. So for rules, a differentiator here versus others is that these are freely available to any administrative user within our platform and they're very intuitive to set up. Um, and we want these to be, because ultimately we know that your business is always changing. So we want this to be e easy to change whenever that um, need comes up. So to show these off, easiest way to do that is actually to create them. So we'll create a new rule here. Um, and then again, two flavors, rating rules and shipping policies. So rating rules, they, they determine how we're displaying back those rates back to the internal system or even what accounts we're using. So that's, that's a good one and that's where we'll start. So for rules, there are a lot of things we can do to make that experience better. So we'll kind of just casually go from top to bottom here. These are all the ways we make that experience even better. And so going on down through here, yeah, there are markups, uh, markups here, masking, carrying service, free shipping for you because you're so cool. Um, or we can say use these one of these, one of these uh, carrier 3PL accounts. So we can say here, I actually want to use one of my multiple UPS accounts here. So actually, I'm just trying to think of one where I have multiple accounts here. I don't have too many more. Oh, yeah, FedEx, I think I have multiple. No, I don't. But ultimately, it will show every single account you have here. So we'll use UPS. And we'll say, use this specific account. And then, of course, we'll say, well, I don't want to always do that. That, that. that wouldn't work for me. But rather, some of the time, well, when is that some of the time? So a lot of ways you can qualify this. So you have your standard list of criteria here, which we'll run through can be carrier centric, address centric as well, contact centric, items, product categories and subcategories as well. A lot of different things you can use here, or you might have a certain reference in mind or some kind of native field or custom field from your ERP we just don't natively pull. That's also easy to use as a reference. So we'll come on through here. For that, you just tell us what the field name is. So we'll just say, keep it generic here, what that field name is what value it contains, um, and I always say contains, but you can be more fle flexible with your comparative operator, then this occurs. And this can get even more specific from that point. So well, it actually has to be this and this to fire off, and they have a nested condition within criteria. So they can get your OR switch going. So the big takeaway there is that you can be hyper precise with how these rules are applied within our system to satisfy really any business requirement. So. That is a rating rule. Now we talk about the other side of the house here, you have shipping policies, which these affect decisions made at the time of fulfillment, and they are slightly different. 
So this are, there is a lot of overlap, but all of these rules here, they exist to then automate the decisions the warehouse is making every single day. Charlie, just hoping you're getting it right. Maybe they are, but over time, we want to talk about scalability and you know accuracy and all those different uh, fun words that help us get better. So uh, a lot of different things in here, um, thinking about carry usage, accessorial application, um, using for a lot of our shippers, they have they have to ship blind or double blind. And so alternate return addresses that appear on packing slips and uh, parcel labels as well. Um, duties and taxes, third party stuff as well. And then carrier accounts again, coming on through here, packing slip formats as well that we're gonna use, which we'll take a, we'll take a look at the that towards the end. So these are all things that you just have, you can always do manually in our platform. That's always an option, but we wanna have the automated. We wanna have basically a, you know, kind of a scan, scan, print kind of methodology for all of our orders, minimizing that, man, that manual touch, driving the speed, efficiency and growth. So, that is rules. They're, they're meant to come up as pretty intuitive. There's a lot of stuff we can do here. Um, and the other part of rules here is that when I look at these, and the, some of the initial reaction to this is like, well, that's fun. I'm going to have to create 10,000 of these because that's the reality of some other platforms because others, they have to be told exactly what to do every single time. They have no automation built in inherently. So that's a little bit different with us. We have a lot of stuff we're just already doing for you. Rules exist to make it even better and to satisfy requirements that we're just not already doing by default or natively. So. And in fact, if you if you could create zero rules in our platform, I'd be I'd be jazzed about that. That'd be great. So most of our customers creating about I'd say on average, especially when I used to do implementations, ten or less. Because again, Chip is doing already a lot of things for you. Um, that's rules. Um, any any questions there from from the chat that you're seeing, Trey? Um, no initial ones, but uh, these rules seem pretty powerful. Um, I know that firsthand. You know that firsthand. Can you talk to us a little bit about the who can make these, who can edit these, who can change these rules, who has the power over these rules at uh, at, at a business? <laughs> the power. Any administrative user uh, free, free to do that. So shipping clerks now. We you don't want them in there. Um, maybe shipping managers not so much. We want administrative users to be in here making these changes. So the business should be empowered to do so. Perfect. Um, so a uh, question that doesn't really fit our, our next topic here is reporting. So just for the audience, if there's any additional questions on rules, they're obviously powerful and complex. So happy to answer any individual cases here or just let us know those questions. We'll get those answered for you in the future or set up some time to review. Um, but one question here that isn't related to reporting, but would be good to cover. Uh, do we support bulk shipping? Um, the example here is we pick items in bulk for orders that have uh, an order quantity of, of one. There, there's no pick, there is no, there's no pick tote cart number from NetSuite WMS. So how would mm -hmm. ShipHawk work in that case? Um, yeah, that's when you, yeah, oh well, God, <laughs> there's more. Uh, I was gonna say, if you, if you, there's no, there's something else on that question, but uh, a few different ways to handle that. Um, Rob, thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. So we took the discrete processing, um, which it's a, yeah, that's the, that's the majority of our, of our shippers, but certainly it's not all of them. So yeah, for bulk processing, um, the way I'd the the way what we're offering here is robust filtering and saved filtering as well to help you get this done. So if you look at the filters, let's see what we have available to help us find those specific orders that I might want to process. So of course you mentioned package count of one. Well, here you go, already right there. Looking for some onesies here. Then maybe I'm looking for onesies of a certain SKU as well. And this is my it's my favorite power supply. And there you go. We'll drop that down here as well. Good to go. And then there's a lot more you can use. So you're look, looking through here as far as we can leverage references as well to help us find these. In fact, to jump in, in someone also asked about UPC numbers. I, I answered that in the chat, but Rob, if you kick that filter open for me, you'll see UPC down there. So mm -hmm. uh, you could take your UPC, put it in, and we would display all those orders as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So this one here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, I'm not gonna actually use it in a filter, but show you if you did have them, that indeed this is what you would do. So we'll kind of, we'll remove that. We'll then apply it and then we'll see how that order count will drop significantly. Then these are all the orders that match my criteria. From here, all you'd have to do, because you're probably at the point and say, look, Shipbox, I have the automation already. I don't need to go into each individual order to get labels. I really don't want to do that. Rather, I trust you. And so well, however it looks right now, I want my labels for it. I want my docs. You can select all here in the top corner. You can select individual ones as you want. I'll select all. All you have to do is click process orders. And what that does is, is it tells ship like whatever this looks like right now, book it, go to the carrier, get my labels for them, print them all out, and then you're off, then you're off to then finish out the fulfillment as well. 
Um, and then also another note on bulk processing here, this is great for your one-offs, like in your ad hoc searches here as well. All of these searches that you create, you can save them. So then effectively you can start working out of folders. So what we'll do here is that, um, yeah, we'll do this here, you know, call it this one here, and then X one. You can say that for one you can literally call it anything you want, save it. And then now this is my folder of all the different, these match the criteria. So really I can work out of these all day long, select a folder, boop, done, process orders and you're done. And again, probably a three click operation to, to do this. And there's no limit on how many you could do. You can get three clicks to produce 2000 labels. that will be easy enough to do in our platform. So either ad hoc or via safe searches, we definitely help facilitate the efficient processing of bulk shipment. Awesome. Um... With that, uh, next and final workflow automation that we're talking about here is, is really just making sure that we get your your data needs to you as a business. Um, Rob, that leads us up to reporting. It does, third and last. The insight into the business to help you grow and scale. So um, there are multiple ways to get this done um, through us. So I'll show you a couple of pre-configured dashboards on the platform, and then a few other things that will, then that will end with custom reporting, which is um, probably the fanciest of them all. So what we'll do here is we'll start with what you're greeted by as a shipping manager or an administrative user, which is the command and control dashboard, which helps you do exactly that with your operation. So you can see here some top line metrics that you'd expect to see and a couple of things you may not already have. So order volume, shipment volume. You know, that, that, that one, yeah, that, that's standard stuff. You want to see that shipping cost per order. This is going to be key. This is how much of the shipping cost that, um, of the total valuation is making up. So I'll help you understand this kind of what this is really costing you to do uh, overall. Then delivery promise. This is, this is one where it starts to diverge into stuff you probably don't have. This delivery promise is not just the, uh, the overall um, reliability of the carriers that are published one for all of their shipments. This is actually what, these are your shipments. So because of all of our integrations are in real time, they're gonna return back to us their on time, their pro pickup promise and delivery promise. And we're looking to see just how true that is. So we're gonna see here, not bad. Ship promise, pretty good. Can't get much better there. So on-time pickup versus on-time delivery. Then down here, this is carry by carrier breakdown. So I only have about five carriers you use here. These are all your carriers. So those help you decide, are these carriers that currently have, are they reliable? Are they cost effective? Maybe so, maybe not. And then it helps you understand who should I be renegotiating with? Who should I be giving more volume to or not? So helping you kind of make those better, more informed decisions. Then you can see a few other things here, top lanes, where are you going, where are you not going, who needs to know about you, and then what needs to get done today. So nice, simple effect dashboard helping you understand your fulfillment at a glance through ShipHop. That's, number, that's one. Uh, the other pre-configured dashboard is, is this weekly shipping performance. Uh, these are week over week trends, so not wholly different, but a, but a little different, and, and really two things to point out here. So number one is rate optimization, and that's really key because what this is not telling you is it's not saying that, hey, guess what? This is how much, this is the difference between published and negotiated rates over the past week and this is how much you save. Like, yeah, everybody knows the difference is massive and that's not really helping me grow. What this is really saying is that versus the same level of service you got back for what you ultimately chose, this was the difference between them and you chose the best one. And because you did that, you created this much value and saved this much money. So that's good to see. Also productivity reporting. So this is a nice, nice light one. You want to see who's on the podium, right? So you can see first, second, third, you think, you think like, oh, they must all be wonderful if they're all my top three shippers. But you can see here that that's not necessarily the case. So you can see here, Yulia's killing it. These are the two, not as much. Maybe they need to hang out with her, get better. Well, a good thing to see here with actual real data. That's the second thing here. Um, we'll see more dashboards later with custom reporting. Um, with us and probably no surprise we can also kick out a csv file of all your shipment data so then you can take the csv the, um, and then manipulate it in any way you want so you all of your favorite vba macros anything else you know um all good to go so that doesn't require much much explanation um also with um because you get full access to our, our restful open uh, our open restful api um then you can uh, basically duplicate our data within your data warehouse as well we do have limited support for rest query language in real time as well so we also have that option um, on top of that. Then last, and certainly not to bury the lead, but also we do custom reporting. And so we at Shipbox, we leverage Looker, which is a nice web-based business intelligence tool um, for our internal per, uh, reporting and you know 
business uh, intelligence. We figure, well, we're pretty good with it. Got a good team here that um, helps us visualize and help uh, helps us grow. How about, you know, we have hope to have your data. Uh, let's offer this as a service. And we certainly do that. Um, so this is a dashboard here of a collection of just common things we've, we've um, helped our customers do. It's certainly not meant to be um, portrayed as a, an exhaustive list of everything we can do. Um, this is a very powerful tool as far as visualization and just straight uh, data reporting as well. So common things you might see here as far as, you know, where are you going? Where, where, who's hot? Who's not? Uh, you count the carrier spend, you know, where you, your parcel and freight breakdown. Um, you know, when, when are you actually most productive? Who's got the biggest piece of the productivity pie? You know, you got a lot of different things you can visualize, just straight report on as well. So with this, the most common thing we see as far as distribution of the reports, because we do own the creation um, of these uh, is gonna be via email. So we can do that whenever you want to whomever you want. Um, also, it integrates with a lot of other different systems on its own as well. We can also just drop it on an SFTP server for you. A lot of different ways to do it. So between custom reporting, pre-configured dashboards, and just kicking out Excel, Excel reports, there are a lot of ways to help us get you that data to help you get better. You just let us know how you want how you want that to get done. So um, ultimately doing good at time here, guys. We got seven to the top. Um, this is not meant to be the full, this is everything about Shipbox that has ever done. Um, so um, with that, it's more towards the four key things here, largely how a normal sales demo would go here. Um, you know, so covered rating, e-com, next week we covered the packing, shipping, we talked about the reporting as well. So with that, guys, um, certainly always happy to jump on calls with you, especially on the pre-sales side, post-sales side, I, I support both sides, so you'd be seeing me again. Um, so. I'm always happy to, to help you out, better understand the platform or grow the business. So with that, Trey, is there anything else in that chat we, we want to cover? Yeah, one more. Um, kind of we'll get to that in a second. Just kind of want to say thanks, Rob, for the incredible overview of those, those four critical workflow automations to, to ramp up that fulfillment. Um, just a couple qu minutes left. So if anyone's got any final questions, now's your chance to, to get them in the chat there for us. Um, otherwise, one on here for you, Rob. Uh, it's a good question. Does smart packing use different package and container sizes to determine uh, size determination based on the carrier? We have issue with current with their current shipping software. Uh, for example, we use UPS as a shipping method, but when it suggests a container, it suggests a USPS box because its cubic dimension is the most. Oh uh, yeah, so, some moons ago, many moons ago, uh, I might have told you that man that sometimes happens. No, um, it that does not. Um, that was no. That specifically, we do we restrict the usage of carrier materials to specific carriers. So yes, USPS flat, flat, flat box. Yeah, UPS. We don't want that. That would that'd be bad news. <laughs> so no. Um, so yeah, carrier specific materials are restricted to specific carriers in our platform. Awesome. And that's the last question that we have for the day. Uh, so really, just want to thank you all for joining us. We'll make sure to reach out and get any of those additional questions answered. Please feel free to reach out to us at learnmore@chiphawk.com, and we'll be sure to get back to you and connect you with the right people. But thank you so much for joining us today and have a great rest of your afternoon. Thanks, y'all.